We just did this in the previous video talking about dirty pores. Now we're going to try tip number two, or I should say technique number two. So hang on, let's have some fun. Howdy, howdy everyone. This is Claire Lawrence, and we're going to continue on with our dirty pour. Um, so the, the video before this, we sh I showed one technique of doing a dirty pour, and this time I go through the second one. So I'm going to use the same kind of colors and I'm going to bring you up just so that you can see my color palette laid out. There's several really nice brights in there and some subtle tones and some whites and black and a little bit of gold. So I'm going to use the same color palette so that you have a good example of both of them. And I'm sorry I don't have two round trays to de definitely do side-by-side -side comparison, but these are about the similar size as far as area space. So hopefully that'll help. But I will put in a, a clear coat on here to give the resin something to easily glide around. And I did the same thing with the other one. So we're gonna get started. Uh, first color that's up for grabs is, actually let me move this out of the way and I will start filling up my cup here. So the first color here I've got is um, my white and it is a combination of titanium white from Just Resin and stone coat base tint. The base tint will add some extra cells and the white titanium adds the opacity to it. Uh, and also a possibility of some feathers and lacing. All right, there's that. And then I've got a little bit of a tint, a white tint in here with a whole bunch of um, glitter. I don't know if you can see that. So that'll add a little sparkle in there. And then we're gonna layer up our brights. So I've got a couple of fluorescent colors in here. Uh, and a tip for laying in your colors for dirty pores. Try to put them in orders of colors that naturally go well together. In other words, like green will blend really well into blue. Uh, blue will blend really well into purple. But if you put a yellow next to a purple, you might get some mud in there. So try to put a color that naturally transitions from one color to the next, next to each other. And that will help you a little bit. So I basically got a warm palette plus some black and white and gold. But a warm palette with a lot of punch because there's a couple fluorescents in here. Because, well, I like brights. And why not? And then I've also got a deep purple, which is kind of a nice luster color which will change up the color palette a little bit. In other words, uh, a lot of these colors are creams. I had a little bit of glitter in with a white. And then uh, this deep purple has a little bit of a luster color in it. So it makes it a little bit more interesting instead of just being, you know, all creams or all glitters or all, you know, that kind of thing, or all metallics. You change it up, you got a lot more happening there. All right, a little bit of black, and that's a tint. Just a little black. A little gold, because gold can take over. So you gotta be mindful of your gold. Unless you want it to take over, then by all means, go for it. And then I'm gonna end it with some more white. Or I shouldn't say end it, I'm coming to an end. More white there. A white glitter. And then just like I did with the other one, I had a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange, and a little bit more pink.
I'm not measuring these out as far as actual colors back to back, so you'll have to bear with me on that. We're not doing science experiment, we're doing arty experiment, so don't have to be that precise. Except when it comes to measuring out your, your resin, be precise on that. Okay, and then here's the pink. Okay. All right, let me put these colors to the side. That'll be me plunking the colors around, moving them away. clean off my gloves a little bit because they're messy. Okay, I got the back. I don't know how I got the back. How do you get the back side of your gloves sometimes? I don't understand. I'm sure you guys have the same issue. Okay. So here's that. And then I'm going to put some clear resin down. And the resin I'm using today is Stone Coat Art Coat resin. A lot of colors I'm using today are just resin colors. All right. Heat this up a little bit. Not worried about going completely edge to edge because the amount of resin I'm adding to this, it's naturally going to want to go to the edge. But I want to give it something to glide onto, and that'll help out. And if you do happen to get up on the edge a little bit, like I just did there, get a little bit of alcohol on like a paper towel or something to clean that off uh, when you're done with your pour. All right, I'm gonna get a fresh glove. The more I can keep that area clean, the better this tray will end up looking. All right, hit that with a little heat. Get rid of that bubble there, especially that big one now. is that. Okay, I don't know, well, I got it, whatever it was. Okay, so, man, it's weird. It's like I look at it visually down here and it's like, that's really crooked. It looks like it's like really off, but I'm looking through the camera, it's not so crooked. Okay, all right, so that's our cup and what we would normally do with acrylic pouring and you do a flip cup, you end up turning your canvas over on top and then flip the whole thing over. However, we have a bunch of clear resin down here because it helps move resin around. So that means I have to flip over this cup in a hurry. Uh-huh. And you gotta develop the courage sometimes to flip that cup over in a hurry because you don't want that cup to go everywhere. So this could either be a really hysterical video or just epic. So hopefully it's not an epic fail. All right, good grip on the cup. And yep, okay. And breathe. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna wait a little bit for this resin to go down. It's already starting to go out the bottom. And I'm gonna do is pick it up and kind of move it in a little swirl pattern when I make, pick it up. Or at least that's the theory anyway. I already like that right there. That looks really pretty. 
right, here we go. And I'll let it do its movement that it needs to do. And it's already going to push any clear that's there to the side or just go ahead and go on its own. While we're waiting for this resin to move around, I will kindly talk about some other things about trays. If you decide to pour on trays, be mindful when you have seams like this that there could be a possibility that it leaks on the other side, like underneath. So you may want to check your seams. And uh, don't do as I did and not check your seams because we're hoping that everything is nice and hunky dork. All right. I probably could have used a little bit less resin, but that's okay. All right. I'm going to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this a little bit and go up the sides a little bit all the way around here. And it's something I did similar on the other one as well. I find that on the trays it looks a little bit nicer. And it also starts to get a little bit of movement going on. Let's see if I can bring you up so that you can see how it starts to move around. And then I can bring it back if I want to at a certain point and let that be. It's a fairly simple technique. It's a little bit on the um, nerve-wracking side as far as the flipping of the cup. But you can end up with some really, really interesting blends. Like That's a really pretty blend. You can get some real dramatic cells. If you go with less resin color onto the transparent, and really do a swirl thing, you can have some clear resin running through it so your wood shows through as well. Like we got a little bit of clear going on right here. All right, let me bring you in for a close up. So this is gonna continue to develop and do some magic, especially with this uh, base tint and the white. It might stay very similar and it might change a whole lot. So there's always a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to hit it with a uh, heat gun just before I put it up just to get rid of all the extra air bubbles. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot. Seems to be, there's a little bit of texture there, but not a whole lot. So. Until tomorrow. Later. All right, this is the next day after it has cured. And it has cured rather nicely. Um, we did, remember this was the flip cup. And we did get a lot more, um, I guess you can call it dirty colors, where the colors kind of mixed together a bit more. So a lot more of the darker tones. And I don't want to quite say mud. It doesn't look like it's mudded out yet. But definitely not a lot of the brights in there. But a whole mess of cell action. So I did not seal this uh, tray at all, meaning uh, I didn't work on the corners. And I have done this before with this particular uh, bamboo tray where I didn't do anything with the sides. And I know it. if it does leak, it leaks very minimal. And so I wanted to show you this. So it did do an actual leak here, but it didn't leak a whole lot. So it's enough that I can probably take off the remainder with either uh, sandpaper or hit it with a heat gun and, and scrape it off that way. But I do want to show you this. Okay, because this is at this soft cured stage, in other words, it's okay for me to touch. I'm not actually leaving fingerprints, but it's still very soft and malleable. 
it's easy to cut off with uh, a knife of some sort, a very sharp blade. But obviously, take precautions. I mean, this is a cutting surface here. Um, shh, I use my hubby's cutting board. Uh, at any rate, uh, so be reasonable, you know, cut away from yourself. Use Have a cutting mat of some sort. Be mindful of the blades and stuff like that. But um, this did cut off rather easy. And in fact, this side is pretty smooth. Here, this is a little rougher. So I'm gonna wait till this gets to be a hard set and then I'm gonna hit it with sandpaper to really smooth out this edge a little bit. So I wanted to show you that. But um, overall, I'm happy with the piece. What do you guys think? It's a little bit busier than probably most people would like, but there's definitely a lot going on on this thing. Anyway. any rate, all right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. There you go.